Howdy, hey, I'm Brent. Welcome back to the channel. This is Useful Aircraft. I want to show you what I've been working on. This is my plank. A plank is basically a flying wing that has a fuselage. The beauty of a flying wing is it's simple. It's easy to build. You're talking about two servos, a couple of push rods, control horns, motor, ESC. In this case, I've got a flight controller in it and an FPV system. The, um, compared to a conventional airplane where you've got to deal with, say, three servos if you're talking about two ailerons and an elevator, or more if you're dealing with rudders and other complicated flight controls, this is a quick and easy build that is well suited for electric use. Why is it well suited? Because planks are very critical when it comes to center of gravity. The upside of a battery-based system versus a fuel-based system is as you burn fuel, your center of gravity doesn't change. An empty battery weighs the same as a full battery. The other upside of a plank, and particularly as it regards to FPV, is there's no propeller in view. The prop is a pusher, so meaning it's at the back of the airplane and provides its thrust in order to get the airplane up and running. The downside of it is there's no induced flow. In a tractor airplane, where the propeller would be at the front, Induced flow is the mass of air that is accelerated by the propeller, which then passes over your, the rest of your aircraft, including the flight controls. That mass of air is faster than the free stream air. And when you think about it, it's effectively like providing power steering for the airplane. An immediate throttle response will immediately increase the control authority of either your ailerons or elevator when you have induced flow. Planks and pusher flying wings do not have that. In order to get increased control effectiveness, you need to accelerate the airplane. And the only way to do that is to have the, the room to run, essentially. So if you're coming in and about to hit something, your only hope to pull up suddenly and abruptly with one of these is either to have an excess of airspeed or to cob the throttle, get that organic airflow over the wings, and then apply the pitch command. In conjunction with that, it's best to remember that your ailerons and your elevator share flight control authority and that flight control authority is divided by whatever percentage of the mix you're putting in. Insofar as if you are in a diving role, it's critical to resolve the roll issue first before applying uh, the corrective pitch input uh, because if you try and do both you'll discover that you're getting marginal response out of them in a combined manner, unless you've got significant airflow. I still really love the planks. They fly a lot like the jets that I'm used to flying. In that, in order to do anything, you've got to be going fast. Speed management is critical. A lot of ultralight, very small um, radio controlled airplanes that are of a tractor configuration, um, the throttle response and control authority you gain with that throttle response is almost, it's cheating. You know, we don't get that with full-size airplanes. There's too much inertia. There's, uh, there's, there's too much going on. Um, cobbing the throttle in a, even a single engine Cessna won't necessarily get you out of a stall. You don't see Cessnas going out and hovering and, and doing the silly stuff you can see guys doing with, uh, with, with RC airplanes. Planks fly a lot more like we see with jets, where you've got to maintain that energy state, you've got to maintain that airspeed, you've got to pick a reference speed that you're going to do on your approach, and you've got to stick to it. Because once you start getting below ref, while the approach may still appear for by the external observer to be stable, you'll discover at the bottom of the approach, when you hit your flare, that all of a sudden you have no pitch authority for your uh, to arrest that rate of descent prior to touching the ground. The airplanes are uh, remarkably st sturdy, simple build. I draw these up in Corel, um, design them in basically in, in two dimensions. My designs are optimized for airflow for the FPV system. That's why they have a wide open front. The, um, they also have these holes here in order to access the flight controllers. As you can see in my pan tilt version, here's that. The uh, flight controller is accessed through here. Basically, I take a USB cable, hot glue it to a, uh, to a popsicle stick and feed that down through there. And I can hit on my, uh, that's a uh, Speedy BF 405 
Uh, it's the, uh, I can hit the, the USB port that's embedded down there. My pan tilt, same thing, homegrown pan tilt assembly. As you can see, the, uh, there's one servo mounted inside. There's a uh, second servo up here which controls the camera pitch. The upside of this pan tilt assembly is that I'm able to, when facing forward, pitch the camera all the way down. And again, with the geometry of how I've worked this out, um, you'll have no portion of the aircraft in sight. And so you can get a really nice, I don't know, what is that, orthonographic view? Uh, basically a top-down view of whatever it is you're flying over. Um, with the FPV systems, a lot of folks have asked, uh, the stabilization, the gyroscopes um, that stabilize the image work well with pan tilt systems. Basically, it must be referencing the actual camera itself and not the air unit, or it's performing some calculation that I don't understand. Honestly, it's well above my head because this provides, this produces some beautiful FPV, stabilized FPV footage. Um, when you're looking down, uh, the horizon line on your heads up display is still accurately displaying, so you're able to make maneuvers and reference pitch attitudes based on, say, you know, climbing or descending or whatnot. So um, it's, it's really a brilliant system for how it works. This camera system also allows the camera to turn around and face aft, um, so you can get some nice views looking out over the tail and see what's going on. Um, same thing, flying off ELRS, you can see ELRS antennas sticking up there. As the pan tilt version compared to, say for example, the line of sight build, or just a uh, straightforward facing FPV build, as this system has perhaps a higher ref speed coming into land, I do have a 3D printed skid plate that I put on the belly of that. Um, this airplane's flown, no, plenty of times, uh, landed on both concrete, roads, uh, asphalt, and out in the grass, and survives well. The, um, the interesting thing with the pan and tilt setup is as there is some drag that it is high relative to the both the center of gravity and the center of lift in this airplane, you end up with a pitching moment drawing the nose up. That works to make this airplane more pitch stable as planks, particularly when they get slow, tend to hunt in pitch for pitch stability. That's the reason that when you see this airplane with no horizontal stabilizers versus my airplane that I'm testing out some new designs here, I've incorporated horizontal stabilizers. These are fixed stabilizers. They are not elevators. They simply provide additional pitch stability in keeping this airplane uh, stable as, a, as an FPV platform. Again, the effectiveness of those is diminished as you get below what I would consider your ref speed. Um, your ref speed for any airplane, you know, in jets, typically when we talk about landing and approach, we use 1.3 VSO, which is 30% uh, above your stall speed. In this airplane, I'd have to go back and, and take a look. Um, but basically, you, you take the airplane out, fly it up to a safe altitude, I do this on an FPV system, and I determine where I start losing my pitch authority, what, how slow I can fly the airplane and still have the ability to make a, a flare, uh, a, a basically the minimum speed at which I can arrest my landing sink rate. And that speed, if I remember right on these airplanes, I want to say it's, it's around 40. Um, but I make my approach at that speed, and that's uh, in this airplane, I believe I'm using kilometers. I, I'm gonna have to check, I have notes. I can then arrest my descent rate and uh, that's what I use on, on landing. You know, the, the landing uh, rollout, as you would say, uh, on these landing on grass, you're talking maybe 10 feet. I mean, they come down and come to a stop pretty quick. Um, but overall, it's a very simple, it's a very quick, it's a very easy build. Um, you know, as you can see, it's an inverted KFM wing. I have cutouts so I can put my uh, Nerf dart uh, bomb racks on there if I want to. A um, couple of popsicle sticks that I embed here, and uh, those live inside the wing. The wing gets the bulk of its um, structural rigidity, both from popsicle sticks, these ones laid flat back here, and then these embedded in the wings. 
But in addition to that, it's also the, uh, the curve of the leading edge, which is provided by just a fold over leading edge. That, uh, that fold provides remarkable rigidity in terms of um, adding strength to the wing. Um, the sub 250 airplanes, for the most part, I don't embed popsicle sticks or put additional uh, bracing on it. But this airplane, particularly when you put the flight controller and flying as I do with a, this is a homemade 18650 4S battery pack. Um, you got to make your decisions if that's something you want to do. I enjoy flying with the uh, 18650 lithium ion cells. The reason being is when I pack and uh, pack them for travel, I put them in 3D printed cases that keeps each cell individually isolated from every other cell. Furthermore, I charge them just using a USB-C charger. Um, it's a gang charger. We'll charge up to eight batteries simultaneously. It provides cell impedance. I can monitor the temperature um, and adjust the rate of charge for each cell. I can balance the cells, and if any cell becomes damaged, I can pull them out and toss them. Um, my 18650 packs, I uh, I buy the I buy the battery uh, racks basically, um, and then 3D print a mount. So without batteries, that's basically what you're looking at. Got a 3D printed. Uh, divider in between the plates. Um, <clears throat> I mark, as you can see with the paint stripes, uh, where the anode and the cathode go. Same thing on my batteries. I put great big stripes. You can see it at the top there. Um, basically, I put I align that stripe with a paint stripe when I put them in. And that makes sure I'm not putting anything in backwards. Um, going to give myself an obvious short. <clears throat> Same thing. These are solutions that I just try and engineer the stupid out of it. Believe me, it's it's more than possible to uh, short your batteries and kill an expensive pack, but with those paint stripes, it makes it easy. In a belt and suspenders format, when I'm putting together a pack like this, I use a Velcro strap as well, and I just throw it around just to make sure that nothing goes anywhere. Every one of these airplanes uh, you see behind me, um, they all fly using battery packs like this. It's um, I much prefer the lithium ion cells over the lithium polymer packs, just in terms of what happens if an individual cell gets damaged. Um, it, it's a lot easier to replace a single 18650, even when you do impedance and capacity balancing, than it is to uh, just throw out a complete uh, LiPo pack. So that's basically it. Again, um, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. I don't have a name for these. I don't know what they are. Um, I just call them my planks, but if, if you got a suggestion for a good name, um, something we can call them, that'd be great. Uh, leave it in the comment section. I'd love to hear about it. If you want to reach out to me, usefulaircraft.com. I'll always be there or available here in the comment section. But uh, same thing, if uh, find me on usefulaircraft.com, reach out via email if you have something uh, you'd like to share or suggest. Um, but that's it. I'm pretty proud of these airplanes. Quick build. You can throw one of these things together in an hour or less. I recycle all my parts when uh, when I'm done. This is what I love about foam board airplanes. When I'm done with it, you douse the hot glue with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, and the hot glue just lets go. You end up with all your components back. I throw the airframe out, and uh, when I get to my next place, I build another airframe up again. Just hot glue, hot glue in the same components. Uh, reuse the, even the control rods, and, uh, and you're good to go. It's... Um, it's something I'm proud of, and I hope you enjoy. Thanks for your time.